12 Intriguing Historical Misconceptions About Famous Figures History, as they say, is written by the victors. However, sometimes myths, exaggerations, and outright fabrications make their way into the narrative. This video seeks to debunk 10 of the most persistent misconceptions about historical figures. Number 1. Cleopatra's Intriguing Lineage Cleopatra VII, often just called Cleopatra, is frequently depicted as an exotic Egyptian beauty. However, her roots trace back to the Ptolemaic dynasty, which had Greek Macedonian origins. Established by Ptolemy I Soter, a general under Alexander the Great, the dynasty ruled Egypt for nearly 300 years. Though Cleopatra was born in Egypt and was the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt, her ancestral lineage was not purely Egyptian. But what makes her stand out from her predecessors is her embracement of the Egyptian culture. She was the first in her dynasty to learn and speak the Egyptian language fluently, rather than solely communicating in Greek, which was customary for the Ptolemaic rulers. This linguistic shift was part of her larger strategy to align herself more closely with her Egyptian subjects and legitimize her reign. Number 2. Newton's Apple Myth the legendary tale of an apple falling onto Sir Isaac Newton's head, leading to his groundbreaking realizations about gravity, is entrenched in the annals of scientific folklore. However, the story isn't as straightforward as it's often presented. While Newton did recount the apple observation, he never claimed it hit him. In his conversations with William Stookley, a fellow scholar, Newton described watching an apple fall in his garden, prompting him to ponder why it went straight down and not sideways. This observation catalyzed his thoughts on gravity. Over the years, the story has been dramatized, leading to the widely believed but erroneous image of an apple bonking the genius on the head. Number 3. The misquoted Marie Antoinette. The phrase let them eat cake has become synonymous with Marie Antoinette, painting her as oblivious to the hardships faced by the French citizenry during the 18th century. However, there's no concrete evidence linking her to this notorious statement. The first written instance of this quote appears in Jean-Jacques Rousseau's Confessions, penned when Antoinette was only a child. Moreover, given her charitable works and concerns for the poor, the statement seems out of character. It is widely believed that the attribution of this quote to Marie Antoinette was a part of the propaganda used to tarnish her image during the intense socio-political upheavals leading to the French Revolution. Number 4. Debunking Nero's Musical Performance Amidst Flames One of the most vivid scenes associated with Roman history is that of Emperor Nero fiddling while Rome burned during the Great Fire of Rome in 64 AD. However, this portrayal is steeped in inaccuracies. For starters, the fiddle, as we know it today, wasn't invented until much later, making it impossible for Nero to have played such an instrument. According to ancient historians like Tacitus and Dio Cassius, Nero was miles away in Antium when the fire began. While there were claims that Nero capitalized on the destruction to build his opulent Domus Aurea Palace, both Tacitus and Dio Cassius suggest that Nero returned to Rome to oversee relief efforts. He opened his palaces to provide shelter for the homeless and arranged for food supplies to be distributed. The idea of Nero's indifference, thus, is more rooted in political propaganda than factual history. Number 5. Napoleon, not so short after all. Napoleon Bonaparte, one of the most formidable military tacticians and strategists in history, has often been caricatured as a man of short stature. However, records indicate that he was about 5 feet 7 inches, 1.70 meters, tall, which was slightly taller than the average Frenchman of his time. The origin of this misconception can be traced back to the confusion between French and British units of measurement. In French measurements, he was listed as 5 feet 2 inches, but French inches were longer than British inches. The myth was further perpetuated by British political cartoons depicting Napoleon as a tiny man, emphasizing the supposed contrast with the taller British military leaders. Number 6. Columbus, not the pioneer we thought. The popular narrative often credits Christopher Columbus as the first European to discover the Americas. While he did sail to the New World in 1492, 
marking a pivotal moment in history, he was not the first European to set foot there. That distinction goes to the Norse Viking explorer Leif Erikson. Around the year 1000 AD, almost five centuries before Columbus's voyage, Erikson landed on the shores of what is today Newfoundland, Canada. He named the place Vinland due to the wild grapes found there. Despite Erikson's earlier discovery, Columbus's expeditions played a more significant role in opening up the Americas to European exploration and colonization. Number 7. Jesse James, Not Quite the Outlaw Hero Jesse James, one of the most notorious outlaws of the Wild West era, has often been painted in folklore and popular culture as a Robin Hood-like figure who stole from the rich and distributed to the needy. This portrayal, however, distorts historical facts. James, alongside his gang, committed numerous bank and train robberies throughout the 1860s and 1870s. Contrary to the popular narrative, there's minimal evidence to suggest that he shared his spoils with the poor. Much of the Robin Hood image was a product of newspapers of the time, which romanticized his crimes and painted him as a symbol of resistance against big businesses and banks. In reality, Jesse James was primarily driven by personal gain and was responsible for many violent acts during his crime spree. Number 8. Einstein and the Mathematics Myth A persistent myth about the famous physicist Albert Einstein is that he was poor at math during his school years. This couldn't be further from the truth. From a young age, Einstein showed an extraordinary aptitude for mathematics. By the age of 12, he was studying college-level math books. The origin of this misconception might stem from a comment Einstein once made about failing the entrance exam to the Zurich Polytechnic. However, he failed other subjects, particularly the language portions, not mathematics. The myth serves as an ironic contrast to his later groundbreaking contributions to theoretical physics and mathematics. Number 9. Franklin's Electrifying Kite Experiment The image of Benjamin Franklin flying a kite during a storm, leading to the discovery of electricity, is one of the most enduring images in the annals of science. But the story needs some clarification. Franklin, an avid scientist and inventor, already knew about electricity before his famous kite experiment in 1752. His goal was not to discover electricity but to demonstrate that lightning and electric sparks were the same phenomena. By proving that lightning was electrical, he paved the way for many electrical innovations, including the lightning rod. While the experiment was highly dangerous, it's worth noting that he took precautions, and there are debates among historians about how exactly the experiment was conducted. Number 10. Spartacus, More Than Just a Gladiator the legend of Spartacus, often dubbed as the Gladiator King, is deeply entrenched in popular culture. However, historical records suggest he never held or even claimed such a regal title. Born in Thrace, Spartacus was enslaved by the Romans and trained as a gladiator. Around 73 BCE, he led one of the most significant slave uprisings in Roman history, known as the Third Servile War. With an army that grew to almost 100,000 at its peak, Spartacus and his forces won several battles against Roman legions, making the revolt a substantial threat to Rome. But to perceive him merely as a gladiatorial figurehead diminishes his broader impact as a leader of a significant resistance against a powerful empire. Number 11. The Mystery of Van Gogh's Ear the story of Vincent van Gogh cutting off his ear is one of the most sensational tales in the annals of art history. The reality, though, is slightly less dramatic than popularly believed. In December 1888, in a state of extreme emotional distress, van Gogh did cut off part of his ear, but it was just the lobe rather than the entire ear. The incident followed a heated disagreement with his then friend and fellow artist, Paul Gauguin. Van Gogh, after cutting off his earlobe, wrapped it and gave it to a woman in a brothel they both visited. The reasons for his act remain a topic of debate among historians, with theories ranging from mental health issues to the tension in his relationship with Gauguin. Number 12. William Wallace's Anachronistic Attire Mel Gibson's portrayal of William Wallace in the movie Braveheart is iconic, but it gets a significant detail wrong, the kilt. 
The image of Wallace donning this traditional Scottish garment is cinematic, but it's historically inaccurate. William Wallace lived during the late 13th and early 14th centuries, a time when the kilt, as we recognize it today, hadn't been popularized in Scotland yet. The belted plaid or great kilt only started to gain popularity in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. Before this, Scottish warriors would have worn garments more akin to tunics. The misrepresentation, though striking on film, serves as a reminder of the liberties sometimes taken in the portrayal of historical figures on screen.